for the opportunity to present to some of the RBNS community. Um, today, I'll be talking about Delarue's uh, latest House Note series that was launched in February of 2020, but more specifically to try and share some further insights around the design story uh, and the journey of um, the new feature series House Note. <clears throat> So there, there are several parallels uh, between designing a new series of house notes and designing a new series of banknotes. Um, that, but the balance of, of artistry and functionality is, is carefully considered uh, from the conception of the project across, across all of the notes, it, it, including elements of optimal placement of features, what design elements we're gonna incorporate, uh, for public recognition and, and ease of um, identification, and also the, the considerations for the manufacturing process and the cash processing cycle. So when we set upon a journey to release a new series of house notes to showcase some of Delarue's new features, um, it was all of these things are, are carefully considered and we have in, in the house note what we would determine as a, as a fully functional banknote for, for, for want of a better word. Um, and, you know, continuing on from that, a, a meaningful theme, it needs to be chosen um, to tie together the story of the banknote. Um, something that we try to use to delight and engage, you know, every element that we select has function, it has purpose, and every detail, of course, matters. So we began the, the journey as we do with most uh, banknote projects. Um, so what direction are we gonna take in terms of style and thematics and, and what story are we trying to tell and articulate um, through the banknote? And this involves quite a wide cross-functional team all coming together to workshop ideas, pulling together like mood boards, uh, ver very early concepts, sketches, um, which is truly a creative process and is, 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 is a, it's a very interesting stage of, of any project, quite an exciting time. So, you know, uh, we all know a popular theme for banknotes is, is generally a character, uh, one of significance. And, and this was the inspiration for the new series House Notes. So Thomas Delarue, a, a story of um, creativity, expertise and progression. So, so we have the story, um, we now needed the style. So we knew where we were going in terms of story, what we tried to articulate, how, how can we emphasize that through the, the vehicle of the banknote, of course, but what style are we going to pursue? So it's something we discussed at length um, and as, as a design team, something we're, quite, we're clearly passionate about. Um, so yeah, we discussed this at length and, and we wanted to try and capture the overall, the overall story as best as we could of the house note in, in the approach to our style. So in the new series of house notes, we have what we think is a traditional style, but with a bit of a modern twist. So something that we've created, it's in terms of, it's quite visually striking, but it's also robust, uh, sophisticated, and and clearly fit for purpose with with an eye on on our rich heritage as a, as a company so we have quite a clean classic asymmetrical style layered with innovative innovative features um, and hidden elements so we're, we're quite well aesthetically balanced We may have lost Alan. It's the, the house note or a bank note uh, thoroughly. 
Um, so really good, um, really good vehicle to to engage. And the next slides that I'll go through, um, I'll touch on some of these hidden elements in a bit more detail with some explanation behind them. Um, and you know, you should be able to see these hidden elements that run through the house note series and connect to the theme of a, of a modern company which is uh, built on a very proud heritage. So some of the visual elements to look out for, we've got Le, Le Moua Politique, which was uh, Thomas Delarue's first commercial venture, and that dates back to about 1813. Um, that particular uh, element is a newspaper uh, that's published in Guernsey. We have um, playing card suites, uh, referring to the production of playing cards, um, Thomas Delarue was awarded a royal letters patent from King William IV uh, for the manufacture of playing cards and distribution, and that dates back to around 1831. We also have, in 1846, the envelope folding machine was invented and was also exhibited at the Great Exhibition of 1851 in Crystal Palace. And we've taken elements of Crystal Palace uh, and some artistic reinterpretation of that building using some of the geometric sort of structural elements uh, relating to the metal construction of the Crystal Palace with some simplified pyramid shapes that run through the design uh, denoting strength and structure. In um, 1855, Thomas Delarue began printing postage stamps. So we've tried to incorporate elements of that. So we, we've used the serrated edge of the of the posted stamp is a quite a subtle design element that runs through some of the notes. And um, lastly, and you know, this is by no means least at all. Um, the, there are other elements as well, but I'm just calling out a few here. In in around 1881, um, Delarue developed the first uh, practical fountain pen, uh, and later, um, what is called the Anoto pen. Um, and and the Anoto pen became um, a favourite of many prominent people, including the likes of Sir Winston Churchill. So we thought it was really, really um, pertinent to, to include that in our in our design. So <clears throat> moving on to to some of the hidden elements here. So we have and I, I, I'll, I won't go through them in 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 great detail because I've kind of touched on that, but. If we start in the top left, we've taken some sections from, from um, an original painting of the Crystal Palace or an interpretation of that. And we've used that in both visible and, and, and invisible um, detail in the design. So we've got some of the structure of the Crystal Palace that runs through. We've also incorporated more UV features. So we've got the, the F series, which denotes um, obviously the, the, the series of house notes. So we've got that. There's a UV feature, but we've also got um, some see-through. We've got in the in the top right, we have elements of the playing cards. So we have a four millimeter wide pure image thread that runs through, and you'll see the the playing card sweeps will will pulse when when the when the note is tilted. Uh, we also have some other elements where we've got in the in the one the intaglio printed um, numeral. We have some of the playing card suites running through there, and we've also got some of the playing card suites running through quite subtly through through pattern work. Um, if we move on to the Anoto pen, um, this we've used the Anoto pen um, in, in in an intaglio uh, blind recognition feature, which wraps the note. Um, and if we move to the back of the note again. We've got Crystal Palace structural elements. We have the, the Delarue envelope um, quite subtly, uh, if you can see my cursor around this area. So we've taken quite a, it's quite a novel curvature and quite an interesting shape to the, to the first envelope that was produced. So we've incorporated that in our design. Um, and moving on, we've got um, a subtle, a subtle nod to postage stamps, so it's really, really, really not visible here, but across this band, we'll have a serrated edge, which is echoing the details from some of the first postage stamps that were issued. So there's some of the hidden elements, and I've talk, 
talked a little bit about sort of the style and the story that we're trying to portray. But the design story isn't one which just factors into the theme, style, and the overall narrative. It's also one that must consider both paper and polymer. So our F series house notes consist of six banknotes, two on polymer, four on paper. So we need to really carefully consider the transition of features and design elements seamlessly across a series to provide continuity. So to provide continuity of, of, um, of our overall narrative through paper banknotes into polymer, or in this instance, paper house notes into our polymer house notes. So my next slides will share some insight into how, how we set about doing that. How do we transition from, from paper and um and polymer so moving on so we start with here we i'll start with a paper variant of the house note this is um one that i've just re just shared through the hidden elements we have a four millimeter pure image security thread that runs through the bank note through the house note here uh we've we've got a mold made watermark which obviously will be viewed in transmission we have the holographic patch with the uh, Tommy head, Delarue Tommy head here. And we've got some holographic elements that pay homage to the Crystal Palace. And we also have uh, intaglio blind recognition bars here that are wrapping the banknote. Um, so converting the paper variant to polymer really does take careful consideration and we take time to learn and study and fully understand the, the construction of the paper banknote and its features to start devising su su a suitable direction for polymer. Like I said, how do we transition and, and, and provide continuity across this series? So here is, is the complete design. And what I'll start to do is break down elements of the paper house note to hi highlight those specific paper features that won't directly translate to a polymer to a polymer note, to our polymer house note, and talk to the consideration regarding designing for polymer, such as some of the some of the printability. So the shiny reflective holographic patch, I'll just flip through, is removed, and we will look to you know we will look to incorporate that into the into the polymer note as a highly reflective print element. We then look at the intaglio. So the intaglio content is scrutinized for, for printability on polymer. So from an engraving perspective, we treat a paper banknote and a polymer banknote um, quite differently. There's, there's, quite, there's still commonality, but there's, there's some subtle, um, subtle elements in how we would treat, treat the, the engraving differently, differently for a polymer substrate. So traditionally, the ink takes slightly longer to dry on polymer, so we use shallower plate depths, which in turn it does reduce um, some of the tactility. So therefore, the, the blind recognition bars, which we've used the Inoto pen, um, reduces the tactility um, overall. So the bl those blind recognition features, um, those those tactile bars, etc., must therefore be considered for the polymer design. You know, they, they, they diminish in their functionality as we've moved to polymer. So we need to carefully consider, OK, how do we incorporate um, a feature on polymer that be, can be used for the partially cited, that can distinguish between uh, denominational value? So for the polymer design, we consider this and we, we, we integrate um, a polymer specific feature, um, which we, we refer to as tactile emboss which will be introduced and also give a superior feel for the partially sighted. And, and we, we, we continue in this spirit in this vein until we essentially left with a blank canvas. Uh, and then we need to build, build that we then build our polymer version from the ground up. So just, uh, just to recap, um, we have uh, the paper banknote features that don't directly translate to polymer. So just to call some of them out, and you know what we want to do is is of course just just to reiterate we're essentially we want to keep that continuity of the story and what features essentially blend between the two substrates so we look at the holographic foil patch and we look to say okay we can transition this to a feature which we we call argentum which is a highly reflected 
printed uh, gravure ink. Or we could transition to a holographic foil stripe, for example. Uh, the watermark, um, this could be transitioned to either, either what we call a cameo image in a window um, or a print mark that's embedded into the substrate. Or even we can transition that portrait within a holographic effect in, in a holographic full stripe. The, the thread, so the pure pre image thread, obviously won't translate to polymer. Um, so we change that into a, a printed um, magnetic thread. And as I've discussed, the blind recognition bars sort of diminish in their functionality just due to some shallower plate depths on polymer. So we would introduce um, a tactile emboss feature. So the polymerization essentially begins and uh, transitioning the watermark portrait into the polymer substrate can be done in a few ways. Um, the portrait can become an embedded print mark, like I've discussed, which is sort of simulating that intuitive hide and reveal in transmission, much like the watermark would perform in paper. So a really good, good method and substitute. Or we can incorporate as a high definition cameo in a window which is the, the element we selected for the house note. So we start to then construct. We've, we've made some decisions on what features will transition from paper to polymer, the considerations for those that will not transition. And we now need to start constructing the, the polymer version from, from the ground up. So we start with the, the film and we start to layer the opacification. So we start to build layers either side of the polymer film, taking into account the features and effects that we want to include. The window design, as we know, is a, one of the key features, and it's, it's, it's almost a key feature in all polymer banknotes. So we've used the, the high resolution cameo, and this creates a visual narrative for us, which aids user engagement through the use of a familiar subject matter that, that runs through that series. So we have that commonality. This is, you know, this the, the one focal point across the series. Of, of the series to continue that narrative, such as the Crystal Palace, uh, where we've taken structural elements, which can be seen in, in the top of the window. So this would re reflect um, the Crystal Palace. So I'll give you a, a better view. So we have Crystal Pal Palace elements here, and we have the high definition cameo in the, in the center of the window. We also have some of the um, structural elements of the Crystal Palace that run through this element here. So um, the half window, which is just slightly to the right of the of the main window, emphasizes the, the complex substrate layering, whilst again capturing an opportunity for us to continue the notes narrative. And then this time we're including the um, playing card suites. So we run the playing card suites down here. So next we, we start to build the layers of the polymer and we go to Argentum. So we have a highly reflective printed feature. Again, you know, it, it continues in the same vein as having sort of a foil patch. So you'll have this natural shiny effect when you tilt. So we, we continue that from the paper to the, uh, from the paper foil patch to the polymer. And the naturally reflective nature of the pen makes it perfect to integrate in this manner. So it's the perfect choice to integrate into the banknote. Um, we then replace the paper security thread with what is a fully customizable pseudo thread. Again, for us as, 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 a, as designers, this gives us um, quite, quite a wide palette to be creative. So moving from that continuous stripe um, allowed us to continue the notes narrative in a different way, in quite a novel way. So we decided to show again um, the playing card suites and also the, the Inoto pen. And as we as we start to build, obviously multiple layers, the, you know the the unique layering process of the substrate really does allow us to integrate with other printed elements. 
such as here we, we integrate printed element as the handle of the Inoto pen, which then integrates nicely and kind of seamlessly with the Argentum sort of pen nib head. Um, we have the tactile emboss, which is in the bottom right hand corner, which is placed in the same region as the former intaglio blind recognition feature on the paper denominations. Um, and explained earlier, this, this kind of aids public recognition and the visually impaired, it's in a similar place. Um, again, considerations uh, that need to be taken when we set about the, the design process. So the process continues again in the, in the spirit until we've construct, in, constructed the full design, incorporating all of the new elements while ensuring it fits in the entire house note series. And this is, this is ultimately key for a family of notes. So a recap on the transition of the hidden elements, some of them stay the same, but they, they'll be in a different format. So we still have, um, if I can find my cursor, we still have elements of the Crystal Palace that run through the design. We also still continue to use the, the UV features. We've got structural elements. We have the Crystal Palace, obviously, in the in, in Litho behind the, the main portrait. We have the playing card suites. This time, you, you know, we don't have it running through the, the holographic, uh, sorry, the um, pure image thread, but we've transitioned them into like half window. We have the Inoto pen, which is kind of taken from the blind recognition bars, and we've used that in, in Argentum. And some of the elements just remain, some of the print elements remain exactly the same. So we have that continuity of story going from paper to polymer, which is which is really important. So, so finally for this piece, um, we have, as I explained, we've got two polymer banknotes. So how do we further consider that continuity of story? And how can we have two, two polymer banknotes sitting with, you know, four paper notes in a series sort of harmoniously capturing that same narrative, capturing those, you know, continuity. Um, so for a polymer design perspective, we look at, okay, what do we have on the, the initial design? So we have a cameo window. And what can we, what can we consider? So with, with polymer, with polymer um, designs and, and the substrate and what we could do from the creative aspects, you know, we can, you know, there's a multitude of combinations we're able to, to, to look at and assess and select to make sure that we maintain, um, like I said, that continuity of the series. It's you know, vitally important for us. Um, so we're looking at different combinations. So we're reviewing and determining which elements will provide that correct balance. So we take a look at the cameo that was in the window um, and we continue this through using a holographic four stripe. The same with Argentum, where we have that um, highly reflective nature of the, of the printed Argentum feature. Uh, and we, we will get that same sort of lustrous um, shine from, from the foil stripe design. Uh, we have the clear window. We now have to transition that into a foil receptive window, which is uh, constructed differently, which allows us to apply a holographic foil stripe. And then also tactile emboss. So tactile emboss is, is extended to provide differentiation between the two polymer house notes. And again, similar to the polymer notes that you will see in circulation between different denominational values, they'll either have a different pattern, uh, an additional cluster of dots uh, and so on. So to create a new var variation of the polymer note, we must look at that main key recognizable element which in our in, in our case is, is Thomas Delivery. Thomas Delivery. So through the family and how it must be adapted. So we start with the watermark and paper. We then transition that to a high resolution cameo image. And now we're taking that same portrait and we'll integrate that into a hologram. So the watermark is, you know, it's it's soft and it's contrasted from the paper making process. So it's you know, the considerations have all been made for, for the original paper making process. The, the high resolution cameo is, is, is sharp and it's it's photorealistic in detail um, to give that high that high quality print. 
And then the holographic portrait is specifically um, created in, in RGB techniques um, for that strong visual playback. So starting to build again. Um, so again, we, we've gone to the to the BOP and the, the, the polymer film and we started to construct. So we now have the base again and we start with the clear window. Um, and this time, as I explained, it's a full receptive window and which becomes larger to integrate that foil, uh, that foil stripe onto the substrate. But the nature of, of gravure print allows allows us again for some more hidden elements um, to be included, such as the continuation of the playing card suites again, which is seen in a in a diagonal formation. So we're looking at opportunities to to again continue that narrative uh, and blend common elements across the series. Uh, we also have, if you can see here, the, the curvature of the uh, folded envelope, uh, which again. Uh, speaks to those those subtle design elements that we're able to bring forward into into the the new design. So an an exciting element for us is the uh, is the applied feature, and it comes in the form of a holographic foil stripe, and this calls back to the applied patch on the paper house note, and it also allows us to enhance uh, our design opportunities for a clear window, and that foil is taking elements from the cameo window and using the, again, the main subject matter and emphasizes them through different holographic techniques. So in, in, the, in the top section, again, we have the um, Crystal Palace, uh, the structural elements of the Crystal Palace. We also have, uh, when viewed using maybe a smartphone light source or another light source, we have um, the two Tommy heads where under, like I said, under a light source, you'll see them dancing in the window area. In that, in that holographic effect. We have the Inoto pen that we've incorporated, which uh, when you tilt, you'll see the, the pen nib pulsing. So there's a lot we can do um, from a design uh, aspect to bring them forward. So, um, and, and the shape of the foil is also reminiscent of the previous window. Um, so we've got some curvature that runs through, whilst the holographic effect, again, continues that narrative for us. So the finished design, again, is one that, um, you know, is one that's in keeping with the family. So when we look at it, 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 it again, it fits nice. It integrates the elements that we, that we needed for continuity. And we, we enhance as a design team, we're enhancing these wherever possible through the, con you know, this, this, this combination of artistry and technology. So from a design uh, potential, how can we incorporate some subtle elements? and use technology to bring to bring that narrative to life um so just and this is yeah this is just giving a a bit of a, a better view uh you can see the sort of tommy heads moving in in the in the window with the holographic element above you can see some some color transition through the hologram at the top hopefully it's it's clear you can see some Sort of color change and pulsing happening in the in the Inoto pen nib, and obviously we've got the the main portrait changing as as we tilt the notes. Um, so so thank you for the time and the opportunity to to present some. So like, uh, I know this is obviously quite high level, um, but yeah, thank you uh, for the opportunity. Uh, I really I hope you've enjoyed the presentation. And it's given you a little bit of insight into how we approach uh, certain elements in design. Uh, certainly, that that the consideration for continuity in the series. Um, and again, thank you to allow me to present to the the IBNS community. Um, just just before I finish, just finally, I thought I'd end with a, a bit of a short video. So hopefully, this works. Uh, and this just captures the 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 inspiration for our feature series house note, and should it, it should pay it, it should reflect what I've tried to articulate in this presentation in terms of the theme, the story, etc. So hopefully this will play, and you'll be able to hear it.
When creating our house notes, we apply the same level of rigour and depth as we do with every banknote that we help create. We carefully select security features from our portfolio and combine them to create the optimal balance between functionality and security. These features are brought to life with symbols and images that are centred around a meaningful theme chosen to engage and inform the recipient. For our house notes, we wanted a theme that best represented our qualities of creativity, progressiveness and expertise. We chose an individual of great significance to us, our founder, Thomas Delarue. Notable events in his life are portrayed throughout the house notes. Infused into the print, polymer substrate and security features, you'll find references to the Le Miroir Politique newspaper, playing card suites, envelopes, Crystal Palace and the Anoto Pen.